Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us today after a grueling corporate tax deadline. My name is Irina Bobrova. I'm Chief Operating Officer here at Pitbull Tax. I hope everybody uh, can hear me well. If you do, please say hello and uh, type where you're from in the questions window. I want to make sure that we don't have any technical issues. Okay, perfect. So I see people are posting. Thank you so much. So everybody uh, can hear me. Thank you. Today we are going to talk about how to take control of your tax resolution practice, how to manage your cases more efficiently, and basically how to get all your ducks in a row to have organized and well-documented backup for everything that you do. So uh, before we start, a little uh, housekeeping information. This webinar is not eligible for CPE or CE credits. Duration of the webinar will be about two hours and we will have, uh, we have allotted plenty of time for questions and answers. There are no panelists or moderators today, so it will be me, myself and I presenting and answering all your questions. And even though my multitasking skills are pretty good, but they're not good enough to talk and type at the same time. So instead, I'll be reading and answering your questions uh, during the webinar. So don't be shy, fire up your questions for me in the uh, questions window of your GoToWebinar widget. And I have a big prize for one of you who will stay till the end of the webinar and ask me the most interesting questions on subject. So what's the prize, you will ask? Um, many of you know that next week we are hosting our next Pitbull Tax user conference at the Diplomat Hotel in Hollywood, Florida. So to the person who will ask the most interesting question during this webinar, I'll give free registration for one person to our user conference, and it's valued at $799. Uh, Pitbull Tax User Conference is organized for CPAs, enrolled agents, and tax attorneys who want to efficiently learn and master the techniques of the tax resolution specialty while becoming expert in the most cutting-edge software platform available today. You will also earn two, uh, 20 CPA credits if you're a CPA or 16 CE credits if you're an enrolled agent. So again, if you want to win this amazing prize, be active and ask me questions. Stay tuned, participate, and don't go anywhere. And if you are not the winner today, we will be happy uh, to see you next week for in-depth training in Pitbull Tax Software and in tax resolution. We still have a few seats left, so you can go to pitbulltax.com. Uh, you can hit Education tab to learn more about this program. Okay, back to business. We will recess for a bathroom break somewhere in the middle for about five minutes, so don't hold yourself from drinking coffee, tea, or other non-alcoholic beverages. I know it's not fun staring at the computer screen for straight two hours, so please get comfortable, eat lunch, snacks, take your shoes off, if you will, or whatever makes you feel non-drowsy. Today's webinar is being recorded, all attendees will get an email with recording link sometime today or tomorrow, and we'll post it on the website too. There are no, uh, there are no handout materials for today's webinar because it's a training session uh, completely designed on software demonstration for those um, who uses or plan to use our case management and billing add-on. And uh, if you still till, till the end of the webinar, I'll share with you some news about our exciting future development and also give you some incentive to get on board with us. So don't go anywhere. And now without any further ado, let me show you how to use case management and billing in Pitbull Tax software. Okay. Uh, everybody can see uh, my screen uh, where I logged into the Pitbull Tax software account uh, on my test account. Before we go into case management, I wanted to uh, show you um, all the fields that are available to you uh, in the client profile. 
To get to the client profile, uh, you can click on uh, pencil icon in the gray menu bar right here. Uh, I hope you can see uh, my pointer. Uh, my uh, current client is Sandra Klein, and uh, you can see her information and her phone number right in the gray menu bar. This is for a reference, like if you're uh, working with a client and you want uh, to have a quick access to their phone number, it's right here. So client profile has many different sections, and I'll go in detail so you know uh, where and when to use it. Basic information for the taxpayer, their names, uh, social uh, security number, date of birth, uh, the client type, whether it's a client or prospect, is uh, on the top. Uh, if you have a client who um, whose address in, is in the foreign country, you can uh, check this box and enter the foreign address. Otherwise, uh, enter the U.S. address. Uh, whenever you enter new clients, make sure that you select county. See right now the county field is empty. This will help you to avoid uh, problems with data entry when you start preparing collection information forms because county uh, um, record is necessary to determine um, standard, IRS standards. Uh, for example, I'll select Fulton County. Then we have uh, phone numbers, um, home, work, uh, cell phone numbers. Uh, email address, if uh, they have additional email, and uh, filing status. Filing status is for information purposes only. I know many people uh, use Pitbull Tax uh, not just for tax resolution practice, but also for the tax prep clients. Uh, so they want to know uh, what's a um, filing status uh, right from the client profile. So you can enter it right here. Then we have spouses information. If a spouse has um, the same address as a taxpayer, just check the box and it will be uh, pre-populated automatically. Um, the next section is uh, for IRS liability. Originally, this section was intended for manual entry, so you know uh, what you're dealing with. So you could enter the year, the amounts, the estimated CSAT uh, for uh, each type of liability, whether it's income tax, employment taxes, Schedule C uh, filers, or civil penalty for trust fund recovery penalties. With introduction of our IRS transcript delivery add-on uh, back in 2015, um, you don't need to uh, manually enter anything right here. Of course, if you use our add-on for transcript delivery. The system will automatically populate all the data right here and it will update every time you pull transcripts. So you don't need to enter years, liabilities, and uh, when liability is paid off uh, for one year but still remains on the other one, it automatically updates. Uh, prior year will drop off and all the CSATs will be entered right here. So if you know that you are using IRS transcript delivery um, add-on with us, uh, don't fill out this section. The next section is for IRS contacts. These are the persons that you are dealing with to resolve the issue for this client. It could be a revenue officer, it can be a revenue agent, it can be ACS personnel, it can be a uh, group manager. Any Anyone that you are in contact with on this particular case, uh, you would enter right here. Um, you know that uh, one IRS contact can be... Um, you, you can have uh, several clients who are handled by the same revenue officer because you, for example, you live close to a particular um, IRS office. For example, mine is Plantation, Florida. Um, so I, over the years, um, had revenue officers working uh, different cases. Um, and you can easily add the same revenue officer to multiple clients. And I use um, additional information uh, field right here in order to make uh, to to um, make some notes for myself about this revenue officer. How was my experience uh, with them? Whether they were nice to my client or to me? Um, 
if they like to um, meet in the office or they prefer me to go to, to their office. So if I have new case and I see that I have the same revenue officer, I can open my notes and see uh, what's going on, whether they are uh, reasonable uh, revenue officers or not so much. So again, they don't see this information, so feel free to enter anything that you want in this particular section. Then we have notes section. This notes section relates to uh, your clients, so feel free to enter here any um, client intake notes. Uh, for example, you meet uh, the client for the first time and you want to make some notes right here, um, so this will be always available to you. Then uh, the next section is for other information and let me explain each field because I see that not many users they know that we have this in place. So the first section, uh, the first field is client ID. Well I know one day I uh, hope that I will grow my practice uh, where we'll have several thousands clients and I will have a need to assign a uh, client ID to each client. So for those of you who already have this volume, uh, you can actually enter IDs. I know a lot of law firms, instead of client's name, uh, they use um, numbers. So the client 123, client 345, and so on and so forth. So this field is for that particular purpose. It's just for your internal knowledge. The next field is categories. So very recently, I think uh, after we uh, finished our third user conference uh, this May, uh, there was a good um, feedback that we received from the attendees and they said, well, we want to uh, categorize our clients because we handle tax prep clients, we have uh, exam clients, we have um, collection clients and so on and so forth. So we want to be able to uh, filter them. So how to do that? So we introduce categories. So you can create um, any category that you want. For this particular uh, license, I just added uh, five simple categories for accounting and bookkeeping, audit and exam, payroll, tax prep, and tax resolution. And um, each client can, ha can be in multiple categories because you know the um, tax resolution clients usually come uh, as a non-filer, so we definitely need to do tax prep if you do this in-house. So you can select uh, multiple categories if you want and you can easily customize them. So when you click to customize, uh, you will go to the settings page and you will be able to uh, create uh, as many categories as you wish and you can put them in, in the order that you want, you can add um, unlimited number of categories, so whatever uh, clientele you have, feel free to edit um, um, as you wish. And uh, if you don't uh, need anything, uh, any other categories, just uh, feel free to delete. So since we're in general settings, let me uh, also uh, explain the next field that we'll have in the client profile and I'll get back to there you will see so one of the fields is client sources so how the client came to you uh, how they find uh, uh, found out about you uh, it's an important statistics statistics for a lot of firms because when you are deciding on uh, um, certain um, media for advertising uh, services, you want to know where your clients are coming from, whether it's from uh, newspaper ads, from magazine ads, from referrals, uh, from your website, if you run TV commercials, and so on and so forth. So uh, you can add as many sources as you want to, and uh, they will be shown in the drop-down menu in the client profile. So if I get there, active inactive statuses of um, the client. When you work with a client and you finish their case, uh, you want to um, archive the client and uh, you want to uh, not uh, see them in the active clients list because uh, uh, the work is done and you don't need to do anything else. 
So what you do, you change the client status from active to closed. Uh, once you do uh, this, uh, the client uh, file is not deleted. So finally, we, we got there. So I'm talking about the status here, active or closed. So whenever you change uh, status to closed, uh, like I said, the information is not deleted. A lot of people are freaking out and they're calling us and they say, well, will I lose it? Maybe one day uh, I will have to come back to this client if uh, they screw up again and they need to help them with their IRS problem. So no, information is not deleted. It's uh, stored, it's ar archived. You just don't see them in the active client list, but you can always uh, come back, uh, filter your clients by closed status uh, and uh, find them uh, by their name and reactivate the client. So this is a status. Uh, you can assign case manager to um, each client. Uh, so if you have uh, multiple uh, users in your company, uh, you can uh, assign it right here. Uh, a lot of tax resolution companies, they use sales representatives, uh, so uh, in-house and sometimes um, not. So you can also indicate who, are, uh, who was a sales rep uh, for this particular case. So this was uh, the same person and also the same person created this client in the system. So created by, you cannot make selections because it's determined by the system. So client source, I showed you um, in the general settings uh, that you can add as many sources that you want. And um, um, for example, this one came from local magazine ad. Um, and whenever you filter your client's list, you can see that uh, you have so, so many clients came from, and you can even uh, go and in, into detail. For example, I advertise in Park, Parkland uh, magazine here, so I put Client source park, Parkland. Then, if I advertise in LA Fitness, uh, I put LA Fitness as a client source. So I know where I get clients from uh, to make sure that next time I um, budget um, uh, my advertising sources properly. The next field on the other information section of client profile is representation start date. And this is tricky name. Uh, but here we put a pitbull tip, which explains uh, what is it for. With uh, version 5.0, we have introduced transcripts dashboard, one section that a lot of people love, and it has uh, offer in compromise section where it shows your successes in offer in compromise, how uh, you do with them. So, for example, you got a client um, and um, you did offer in compromise for them five years ago, but you started using Pitbull three years ago. So, obviously, that client case was handled outside of Pitbull tax, but um, the offer was accepted and you settled a pretty high amount of liabilities uh, for a job change, uh, job change and you uh, want uh, to brag about it. So you want that case in the software. So what you do, um, because the software, um, even if you pull transcripts from 1990, they will not take into account uh, your offering compromise filings um, five years ago because your client was created three years ago. So here you can enter the date when you started representing this client. So you will enter actual date five, 10 years ago, and the system will be looking to this date and filtering your uh, transcripts pool uh, starting from that date in order to generate the dashboard and include all your successful offer, and maybe not successful, uh, offering compromise filings. So this is important field if you handle clients uh, that were created before you started using um, Pitbull tax. Then there is a priority field uh, from very low to very high, low, medium, high. Uh, this is uh, you set up based um, on uh, how urgent is the case and uh, what um, you need, um, how to, you need to prioritize your time. The next uh, field in this section is businesses and clients linked. 
So you know that um, we may have individual clients with um, sole proprietorship uh, that has uh, payroll issues and it's a business client that uh, we have to create separately. So in order to create that connection, so we know that this client ha is uh, connected to this business name or it's connected to another individual. For example, if they're uh, partners in the same partnership and they're all your clients, so maybe you want to put here a, um, a link in order to see the connection. Uh, you can link as many uh, clients as you want. You can just start, uh, start um, typing uh, the company uh, name or client's name and it will be um, order field right here. So you just select it and uh, both of this um, clients, um, um, both of these businesses will be linked to this particular client. Uh, next section um, is payment information. So if you use our payment processing add-on and you process credit cards or e, um, ACH transactions through Pitbull Tax, you would need to enter uh, clients payment information in order to um, run their payments. You can enter both credit cards and uh, bank accounts and you can select which is a primary. So for example, uh, credit card is primary. Whenever you charge an invoice, it will charge that credit card if you select and uh, bank account will be on standby. If you want to use their uh, bank account instead, um, you can set the uh, bank account to primary and that's where uh, it's going to be uh, charged. You know that tax resolution clients are usually uh, the clients who have financial problems. So your payments uh, are often um, bounced. So they, they may give you different credit cards every month. So you can uh, enter unlimited number of credit cards right here. Then we have a section for client portal. So each client um, can um, be invited to your client portal. Client portal is um, not an add-on, it's um, a feature that is included in our basic license. So you can uh, create client portal inv uh, invitations for all your clients in bulk, or you can send invitation uh, to uh, individual clients from the client portal right here. Um, this one has been already sent, but uh, it looks like the client didn't accept the invitation yet. So when they will uh, accept the invitation, you will see here that um, um, client is logged. You can actually change the email address if, for example, they stopped using, uh, like, let's say, Yahoo account or AOL account finally, uh, and they switch to different email address. You can update the email address so they can uh, continue logging into to, uh, to your client portal. And also, when your client leave the practice, for example. They don't like uh, something or uh, they don't like your high uh, fees uh, that you charge, whatever the reason is. And um, whenever you um, get rid of client, so sometimes uh, we revoke our power of attorney because we don't want that client anymore. They're creating too many problems. They don't listen to you. They don't follow your advices. So um, those clients you can close and immediately block access to your client portal. Client portal is your property, it's your asset. So why to give them access uh, to uh, your uh, property? So uh, once a client accepts invitation to client portal, you will have different selections right here so you can actually block access to client portal. And the last section in the client profile is bulk request settings. This is done for um, transcripts um, delivery add-on. Uh, whenever you request um, transcripts in bulk, you can uh, choose uh, what years you are interested in for this client or where you have Power of Attorney or 8821 authorization uh, on. Uh, if you create a Power of Attorney or 8821 in Pitbull Tax software, you don't need to do that because automatically the system will recognize uh, that you have Power of Attorney linked to this client and uh, all the periods will be automatically uh, pre-populated. But again, what if 
you had a power of attorney created before you started using pinball tax. Let's say 10 years ago, you already authorized um, for the years that you need right now. And uh, you may check it right here and just click save to save the client pro uh, profile. So I know there are a lot of sections in the client profile uh, that you probably don't use, but I wanted to uh, talk about it today um, because the information is right here and it's uh, pretty useful. Don't, uh, I, I know we have only uh, three mandatory field, fields in uh, the uh, client profile. It's first name, last name, and entry type. And whenever you're in a hurry and the client's sitting next to you, you can, yeah, go uh, with it and just enter their name and uh, client type and then later enter social security number in order to pull transcripts or do whatever you need. But later when you have time, make sure that you enter all other information, at least their addresses, their spouse's information, phone numbers, because all this information is... Uh, uh, fed to the IRS forms you're going to prepare, to different tools. So you don't need to re-enter the same info over and over. Uh, just uh, make sure that the client profile is completed uh, the right, uh, uh, right in, in the first place. So now uh, we did the client profile. I wanted to show you um, how to view your uh, client's list. So you can uh, click in the blue menu bar, uh, bar on clients and select individual clients. And from here, you can uh, switch to business clients or uh, you can uh, select business clients from the drop-down menu right here. The grid uh, has just so many uh, columns that are visible. For some, uh, these columns uh, mean a lot. For some, uh, they don't make any sense. So you can easily uh, change and edit uh, table columns. For example, I want to see the category of this particular client uh, in the grid. So I know uh, visually uh, what this client is um, for, uh, whether it's tax prep, tax resolution, payroll, and so on and so forth. Um, if you want to delete uh, a client, um, any column from this um, read, you can do that. So for example, let's say I don't want to see case manager, who is uh, the case manager on this case. So I'll just delete here and uh, the grid will be automatically updated. From this screen, you can import clients in bulk. So that's uh, one of the questions we get a lot from people who uh, migrate from different software solutions or uh, they want to um, import their tax prep clients. So importing clients in bulk works pretty simple. Uh, we allow you to import unlimited number of clients, uh, but you need to uh, get it in CSV format. And uh, maximum file size should be three megabytes. The fields must be uh, in the following order. So you can either follow the description right on screen or you can download a template sample, uh, template, uh, sample we have for um, importing uh, clients. So if you just open that CSV, you will see that we have one sample um, entry and all the columns uh, that um, you need for importing the clients are right here. Just copy and paste your data uh, to this uh, template, save it, and then import it to Pitbull. Um, because uh, there are different um, fields in the profiles for individual and business clients, uh, you need to import separately individual clients and then business clients. And you can use these steps to switch between individuals and businesses. Um, or you can choose uh, drop-down menu that I showed you before. You can also export clients. So you can export all your uh, clients with all the notes, with all the information that uh, you uh, just saw that we have in the client profile, every single field. When you're importing, uh, there is only like basic information, their names, addresses, spouses information, um, 
so on and so forth. But when you're exporting clients, you will get everything that um, is recorded in Pinball. So you can export uh, all or you can export just selected clients. And uh, if you want to invite uh, clients uh, to your client portal in bulk, just select clients. And at the bottom of the list, we have uh, send invitation. Remember when um, you invite clients to portal, uh, the clients must have email address on file in the client profile. So if uh, you don't have email addresses, uh, you will see pop-up message that uh, some clients, uh, they don't have email addresses. So for those, invitation will not be sent because the system just doesn't know where to send it to. So case management. Case management and billing uh, have um, several sections. It's calendar, it's to-dos, case tracking, time tracking, dashboard and billing. So this is one add-on that is available to all Pitbull tax licensees except for one-time use licenses where you can create only one uh, client, one individual and one businesses. So that type of license is not applicable here but for all other plans, uh, whether you have monthly plan or annual plan, you can add case management and billing and it will give you a uh, additional uh, functionality. So let's go step by step and uh, go into calendar. Uh, with introduction of version 5.0, we made some changes to the calendar. Um, so we have added uh, the colors uh, to the events. So if you want to actually um, be uh, visual and uh, see what's important, for example, like all my meetings with ROs, I uh, color them in uh, the color called tomato here. <laughs> um, whenever you create uh, an event, I don't know why, but it's not red, it's tomato but I associated this sometimes. Uh, I want to throw a rotten tomato to some uh, revenue officers. So my uh, meetings with IRS personnel or phone conferences um, with IRS personnel, I usually uh, colored in this tomato color, but it's, everybody's different. We even have our own color here, PBT blue. So it's pinball tags blue. Very, very nice. So uh, get um, creative here and add your events. So to add a calendar event, all I just did, clicked on the any date uh, on the calendar. Uh, by default, it sh uh, shows you monthly view. So you can create an event. Um, mandatory fields are marked with red asterisk. So you definitely need event name, uh, start and end time. Um, if you want it as a recurring event, you can do that. Uh, you can recur it uh, weekly, daily, or uh, select any custom uh, uh, setting for recurrence. Uh, you want to select here who the attendees. By default, it will be you, the user who is using the calendar, but you can select any user in your license uh, for uh, as attendees. Clients, uh, it doesn't have to be um, the calendar event doesn't have to be client related. So it can be uh, if you're meeting with a client or it's a case related uh, to a certain client. But if you have an office meeting uh, to talk about um, your um, weekly events or uh, to discuss all clients, you can just leave that um, field empty. And you can enter any notes. For example, attendees, uh, they will get, um, they may get e uh, email notifications if you choose so, uh, and they um, will see it on their calendars as well. So if you want uh, attendees to bring something to this event, you can enter this uh, in the notes section. And um, you can choose reminders, whether you want, um, for example, uh, five minutes before start, you can send remind, uh, reminder by email uh, or reminder will be uh, uh, popped up uh, in the software if you're logged in. And if you check the box email to all attendees, they will get email no notification that uh, there is a calendar event booked for them. So this is how you create events. Um, 
with uh, latest version 5.0, we introduced new view for the calendar. So it's not only day, week, and month. Now we have a schedule view. So easily you can see in chronological order all uh, your events uh, uh, that are coming, uh, for example, in September here. Very uh, easy to see and all your colors. So like, okay, so I have uh, unpleasant meeting with R.O. Smith. Um, I know uh, that uh, with a single view. Coming back to uh, monthly view, uh, we have selection here to uh, view the calendar uh, based on the staff or the client. So if you select staff, the first line will be who is uh, attendee uh, from the staff. Uh, if you select the client, the first section uh, will be, uh, for example, it's client related, that you will see client's name. Weekly view, daily view, that's simple. So you know uh, in many different applications, the calendar is working pretty much the same. What else we have here? We have here, reports. So you can filter. For example, you need to find something. You need to find what's coming uh, next month. Uh, and uh, if you want official uh, printed report sent to your email or you just want a printed uh, copy of all your events for next month, you can easily uh, filter here for staff members for the period. Uh, you can filter by client's name or category. So um, you filter and all your events will be listed, which you can email or you can print or save. Okay, so we have, we are 2.40. I see a lot of questions. Um, let me try to start uh, with some questions. I won't bore you um, with a lot uh, during the presentation because some people want to maybe leave and they have other things. But um, let me start. Uh, how is a conference different from the one in May? So um, the one in May, we had uh, two presenters. We had. Um, Bob McKenzie, uh, who uh, had lectured on offering compromises in and installment agreements. This time, uh, we again have Bob McKenzie, uh, but uh, he will be talking about different subjects. He will be talking about uh, IRS procedures. And uh, what else he will be talking? Um, let me check what he's talking about. I forgot but um, in the program agenda, so you can see day two, uh, non-filer representation. So he will be talking about non-filer representations and uh, IRS collection procedures. So that's um, what is different. Uh, there will be a, a little bit different approach uh, to um, case studies. So um, this time I have prepared one case study that uh, I will show you exactly how it's done first. Uh, so everybody will uh, not have to um, enter that information, so we will see one simple case study, and then uh, we will have uh, several case studies that you will do yourself. So, uh, next question I would like to attend as a refresher, but not during tax season. I understand, Tom, but that's what it is. Uh, I know uh, we have a lot of individual clients to deal with. Uh, the deadline is coming, but it's not um, that close to the deadline. Um, the size of the text is too small. Can you zoom in the Chrome? Uh, I would zoom, but then uh, a lot of things will fall out of place and I won't be able to fit a lot on the screen. I will have to use scroll. So sorry, unfortunately, uh, it's the best view I think uh, we can have. How do you make an inactive client active again? Okay, inactive client, you will go to your uh, clients list and you filter. Uh, the client list by closed statuses. So here, active, closed. So you will see all active, uh, all closed uh, clients, and you go into that particular file, and you activate them again. That's 
simple. So you just click Edit, and uh, under Other Information section, you select Active and Save. Um, can pinball tech software be used across a network so the multiple users can access the same record? Um, not the same record. So we have multi-user multi licenses that you can access uh, the software at the same time, but uh, the same record, no. For example, if uh, everybody wants to uh, go to 433A, that's not possible. If one person on the same client can go to 656, but another user can go to 433A or IC, yes, that's possible, but not on the same record. Uh, if by same record you mean client, then yes, but different forms or tools. Is there a drop-down menu where we can just add the revenue officer which we had with someone before? Yeah, you can easily do that. So uh, you go to IRS contacts. For example, here I have revenue officer G. Schneider and uh, under clients associated with, you uh, add the client name and that's uh, that contact will be associated with um, for example, if I want to add uh, Timothy Colt, then Timothy Colt will have uh, in the client profile that IRS contact. So that's how you do it. Um, okay, then we have questions about slowness. I know, I know. So uh, Jose is working on it with his team. Okay, do you have risk management capacity? That is some method of detecting or commemorating conflict of interest. Individuals, spouses, corporations, officers, and prior clients, waivers for the previous list and ownership conflicts. No, unfortunately, we do not have this. We don't have this capacity. But uh, like I said, in the client profile, you can actually link uh, um, the clients together so you know uh, which client is linked to what and um, let me get back to my test client here Sandra Klein so in the client uh, summary that is located here in the gray menu bar that's uh, this um, icon you can see all clients that are linked and they are hyperlinks so you can easily click through there but detecting uh, the conflict of interest no there is no such thing I'm sorry okay so um, enough with questions so far let me go into the next module so the next module under the case management is to do's to do are basically tasks that uh, you need to do or you need to assign to other users in your license uh, or in your company. Can be done from uh, to do's can be created from different sections. Uh, I mainly use it from case tracking uh, when I work on the case, and we are going to uh, do this next. But uh, to add a to-do, just click the button. It's very um, user-friendly and understandable. So title, what you need to do, basically uh, call someone or fax uh, POA to a CAF unit or uh, meet with a client or um, get me the information if uh, you need some documents from a client. You can assign it to any user that you need or you can automatically, by default, it assigns to you. Um, you can select uh, what client it belongs to, very important because otherwise a user will be, uh, who will get this task, will have no clue what you want them to do. Uh, you can set up the due date uh, when um, the to-do needs to be completed. Uh, the case, if the client um, uh, have any open cases, you can set up here. What is the due time uh, for that date? Uh, what is the type of to-dos, whether it's project, assignment, meetings, uh, calls, uh, emails, and so, so on and so forth. And you can set up uh, low or, or high priority. In addition, you can enter uh, many notes. So uh, try to keep the title of to-do uh, short and simple. And then if you want to elaborate, use notes section because uh, then all the reports and uh, especially if you want to do uh, to to show on the calendar, it will be uh, difficult if the title is very long. 
So I know a lot of people just see one field and they start typing right there, but uh, it's title. It's not uh, all your notes that you want to talk about it. With introduction of uh, version 5.0, we also did uh, a change for to-dos. Now you can add subtasks to each to-do. So, and for example, let's say you created a big task that uh, you want to uh, split into several different uh, tasks and you want to assign them to different people. Instead of uh, creating several uh, small tasks, create one big one and then create subtasks of this one. For example, let's say you need to prepare uh, 433 um, AOIC. So you need um, bank statements from your clients. You need a lot of supporting documentation. So maybe your uh, assistant can take care of that and they can contact client and uh, they will upload either a sort of client portal or they'll bring to the office. Anyway, so one task can be get me the documents. Um, then the next one uh, is uh, someone who will enter the information to the 433A. The next task will be to review the information entered. I, I don't know, you know some people, they uh, wear many hats and they do all the tasks by themselves, but uh, a lot of firms uh, with multiple users, they um, break down the tasks uh, and uh, they, um, the, the term Jose likes to use, uh, designate. They designate the tasks. That's, uh, I, I like that. He, he likes to designate, so designate or reassign the task to other users in your license. So here you have an um, ability to do, to do that. For example, uh, get me the documents. If uh, I edit here as a subtask and I want them, uh, oops, no, I didn't want to delete it. I want them by Friday. Um, I can add another one, and whenever users uh, who it's assigned to, for example, I assigned it to Linda Owen, if she completes it, she just checks this box and it's completed. So um, whenever you go to um, the bottom of the to-dos, we have section here for completion. So if, for example, one task has four different subtasks and two of them completed, uh, the percentage completion will show as 50%. So you will see here right away that 50% uh, of the task has been completed. And you don't need to manually uh, enter any percentages. Also, um, you have uh, ability here to estimate a number of hours. So if you're assigning a task to someone and you expect them to work two hours and when the task is completed uh, you can see how much time it took so this is done for purposes of uh, management your uh, workforce and uh, some users uh, some uh, employees or contractors that you hire they work fast and they do it on time some uh, instead of two hours they take four hours if it's a billable time to your client no big deal but if it's not what if you charge flat fee then you're losing money so this is a lot of uh, things here uh, in order for you uh, as a tax practice owner to manage your practice so completion date uh, will be set automatically you see the field is disabled because once all the subtasks or tasks will be uh, marked as completed uh, the completion date will automatically be filled out you can add to activity list once this task is completed. Uh, you can send email reminders. You can display pop-up reminders like this in Pitbull Tax. And you can check if it's billable. So whenever it's a green dollar sign, everybody likes green dollar signs. I do. So it's billable. You click on it, it's gray, it's not. So billable, not billable, the color of the dollar sign. And you just click save and your to-do will be saved. Um, from the to-do list, you can filter the to-do list um, using various filters. So you can see to-dos assigned to you 
or other users in your license and you can remove them and just uh, filter one person and to see what uh, tasks they have. Maybe they don't have anything to do this week and uh, you're paying them for nothing. So make sure that uh, you use those filters. You can filter by all clients or only the currently selected clients. So if I uh, choose current client, it will be to do only for Sandra Klein. Uh, you can uh, select case names here, uh, types of to-dos, uh, priorities. You can show completed to-dos and you can show overdue only. So if uh, you really need to catch up on all your tasks, uh, you may filter by overdue only and uh, that's what will show in the list. Overdue uh, to-dos are shown in um, red font here. So client name and assigned to will be and the completion percentage will be all in uh, red font color. And you can filter by uh, date ranges from this week, this month, uh, next week, next month to in any uh, date range that you want. Or you can filter to do's for categories of your clients. So if you want to see uh, what uh, you have for your payroll clients, you can do that. Remember, whenever you use filters, those filters will be active uh, w during the same login session. So if you logged into Pitbull Tax and you make uh, you use some filters, you can go to different pages of the software and come back to it, the filters will be kept. So you don't have to filter your uh, records again and again. But once you log out, then the filters will be erased and you will have to uh, do it again. Talking about uh, logging out. So for logging out, um, I know recently we had several questions, um, but people don't know how to find it. So we have uh, inactivity sign out time. So by default, it's set to two hours. So if you are not active, you don't do any uh, entries or you don't view anything in Pitbull Tax. Uh, uh, after two hours of inactivity, you will be automatically signed out. So if you typed something in and you didn't save that information and uh, two hours passed, the information could be lost. So make sure that you know about this feature. You can uh, set an activity period to any time. can be one hour, two, three, up to 12 hours, or you can select uh, never, and the system will never uh, log you out. So up to you, default is two hours. Uh, about to-dos, before I jump into different section, to-do settings. So we have uh, different types of to-dos and here uh, you see defaulted to-dos. If you don't use some of them, just delete them. So you don't have a long list in your uh, drop-down menu. So delete them and uh, save it. So filter settings. Automatically um, you can choose uh, which tasks you want to view for all clients or only current client and you want to make a, a selection if you want to see tasks for all users in your company or only the current user, only for you, uh, the tasks that are assigned to you. For example, when you're a business owner, you probably want to see all users, but if you are a um, regular uh, staff member, you may want to uh, see only your tasks and you don't care what other people need to do. We still have a lot of things uh, to do anyway, and uh, viewing different information for other people is just uh, overwhelming. Also, we have automatic activities um, that you can introduce. So we have a lot of customers who are law firms and law, mm, law practices. So they use their own coding for uh, billing purposes. So here we have uh, coded uh, by default several automatic types of activities. Oops, someone logged me out. Sorry, it's my test account and uh, 
some people may be jumping into it. Oh, I didn't go to case. Um, we want to to do's. Oh, I've been to into settings. Sorry. So uh, yes, by default we added all this um, automatic types uh, that you can use when you use time tracking, uh, and you can add your own types. Uh, for example. Um, uh, the tasks that you do uh, on a continuous basis so you don't need to enter the same information over and over uh, or you can just load defaults. These are the defaults. For example, if you decided to delete all of them and uh, then you said, oh crap, what did I do? Uh, you can load defaults and uh, it will be um, displayed back. So these are to-do settings. I think I missed on the calendar the syncing information for the calendar settings. So every time you want to customize anything or every time you want to uh, make different selections for different fields, use this uh, area settings uh, in the blue menu bar and you will see by name what you want to do. So calendar settings, we allow you to uh, sync your calendar events and to-dos uh, um, to your um, Google Calendar or to your Microsoft Outlook. And there are two different um, options right here. The first one is sync with Google Calendar. So syncing of uh, calendar events and to-dos occurs every three hours. So if you create a calendar event today uh, and you went to um, Google Calendar right away, don't expect it to be shown there. It will be synced uh, uh, every three hours. What you need to do, uh, in order to sync a Google Calendar, it's very simple. All you need to do, just log into your uh, open new browser window and log into your Gmail. And that's all you need. And then uh, I already uh, linked it to my account, but uh, when uh, you didn't link yet, you will see uh, get uh, token. I believe that's a button name. And that's it just follow the instructions on uh, screen. All you need to do is having uh, your Gmail account open in a different field. And uh, syncing with Microsoft Outlook, uh, you can just download a file, execute it on your computer, and uh, restart your Outlook. Uh, syncing of events uh, with Outlook, they occur every 15 minutes. Also a very simple process. Uh, you just need to log in to enter credentials for your Pitbull Tax software account, unlike uh, uh, with Google Calendar. Here with Outlook, you will have to enter your credentials. Uh, but once you do it, then uh, you can forget about it and uh, it's, it will be synced. Remember, syncing comes from Pitbull Tax to Outlook, from Pitbull Tax to Google Calendar. It doesn't go both ways. So if you create an event in Outlook, don't expect it to be shown on your Pitbull Tax calendar. It works only one way. And um, if you want instructions on how to uh, integrate um, calendar with um, Gmail or Outlook, use this button to download calendar integration tutorial. Very uh, simple, it has a lot of screenshots, so easy to use. Okay, we are at three o'clock. Let's do a bathroom break, like I promised, uh, so refresh yourself. And uh, in the meantime, I want to um, launch a poll question. Uh, I know that it's not CP eligible um, webinar, but uh, just for my information, please uh, enter your uh, answers. And uh, let's uh, come back in about five minutes. So case tracking, right now uh, we have a uh, very colorful case tracking list and uh, you can see all your cases and you can uh, easily see the timelines and uh, change statuses uh, from right here. And um, like I said, uh, you can add any uh, case 
with one simple click just uh, on the ad start typing CDP hearing um, let's say um, federal income tax for 2015 so that's what you have you just hit enter and your case is automatically created where you can uh, change a client name uh, change priority change the status and change the timeline uh, that you want and uh, the case name will be shown right here all the time if you want to filter your uh, cases you can open filters and uh, enter the client's name the case manager the status of the case uh, you can filter also by categories of your uh, clients uh, and uh, by uh, ranges of dates when it was created or when it was last modified um, cases are usually shown for the last 30 days and if you need to find others you, you need to use filters okay let's go back to settings and uh, we will select case tracking settings Again, here we have filter settings where you can view cases for all your clients and only for a current client. Uh, and you can use, uh, you can view cases uh, created by, uh, for current user or by all users. We have added uh, color schemes to all the statuses of um, cases. So you can be as creative as you want and uh, Imagination is like unlimited here, so you can choose any color palette of uh, your choice. If you notice, there are several, uh, two statuses, no, three statuses that you cannot edit or delete. You can change the color, but you cannot edit uh, or delete. These are completed, uh, accepted by the IRS, and closed statuses. Those three you cannot modify, but all others you can delete, edit, rename, and so on and so forth. Or you can restore defaults. So, for example, if you played around uh, too much, but then you want to uh, restore the defaults, you can do that easily. So, going to uh, case tracking, what I said, how to add notes, uh, since you didn't see my screen, I'm so sorry about that. Um, let me get back to that case and to do that just click on the name in the case uh, tracking list and uh, you will see here all, all your estimated hours estimated delivery uh, date and estimated fee to charge for this case the actual hours uh, actual delivery uh, when you complete the case and actual fee that you charged so this is uh, also done for um, managerial purposes so you know um, when um, you are undercharging uh, or when you are like um, delivering um, not on time so you can uh, make changes to your practice and uh, allot yourself more time on certain cases for example you see that OIC cases are usually longer than you uh, originally estimate so uh, create um, uh, estimate more time uh, before uh, you start the case and under the case uh, progress this is where you add notes so you can add notes you can select a, any date uh, if uh, for example you forgot to add a certain note uh, you can enter time you can enter the description of this note whether it's a email correspondence from a client or whether it's a mail correspondence from the IRS or it's a phone conversation with a IRS personnel anything uh, here and you can uh, enter type uh, time manually or you can save uh, your Uh, note and you can actually mark the um, this uh, particular note as billable or you can start tracking your time and we'll go back to uh, time tracking a little bit later so all this case progress is printable you can print it 
and you can assign to do's right here. So if the case, uh, you can assign any things uh, that you want to all uh, different users in your company. Just click assign to do and to do uh, will open up and we already went through that. Also, uh, for the case tracking, uh, we have various reports. So you may generate different reports based on uh, if you want to see all past due cases, or uh, if you want to see cases by time spent, or cases by fees charged, uh, all completed cases, or you want to see performance report by case manager. So everything here uh, you can create and you can uh, print a report, or export it to um, Excel spreadsheet. So now we are going to go to a time tracking. I know a lot of uh, users um, in tax resolution, uh, a lot of uh, professionals in tax resolution industry uh, they like to work by uh, flat fees. Uh, I know often compromise is one of the uh, good examples. You charge flat fee based on the amount of savings you can do for your client. Um, but uh, there are a lot of services uh, that uh, you want to charge uh, by, by the hour. Uh, those are, for example, exam cases. You cannot uh, foresee, uh, even if you've been in the business uh, long enough, it's very difficult to foresee how many hours a certain case will take because it all depends on what will come from the uh, revenue agent side, what they're going to request and uh, whether they're going to expand to different years. So uh, time tracking is a key here. Um, if you charge by the uh, hour or even if you charge flat fee, uh, for example, for my offering compromise cases, I want to use time tracking because I want to see how much actually time I spent because we, we know that we charge flat fee and uh, we think that we make money there, but sometimes the case is uh, so complicated and so complex or you are dealing with a um, very stubborn client that cannot get you what you need, uh, so you are spending more time and uh, uh, even with flat fee cases, you may want to use time tracking. So time tracking is um, located right here in the gray menu bar, like a clock icon. So you can start clocking any task you want. Just hit the start uh, button and the time will start running. You can select any client that you need. It's it doesn't need to be necessarily the current client. You can enter what you're working on. Uh, you can select that uh, automated activity that I was talking to you about um, uh, for uh, law firms, for example. But even if uh, you are not a law firm, if you're a CPA or enrolled agent, you can use uh, this activity um, um, category because uh, manage data files or communicate with a client or communicate in a firm, re review or analyze. It's uh, pretty much what we do uh, on a daily basis anyway. And you can select a case that it belongs to. And again, that green uh, dollar sign, that means it's billable. Um, and if it's gray, it's not. Um, whenever you uh, start, uh, trying to stop the clock, make sure that you have something um, uh, you, you have any uh, note in this particular field. And we have autocomplete um, function here. So if uh, there is a task that you always do and you time uh, t um, track time on a certain task, uh, they will be uh, displayed right here. So I don't, I just need to uh, enter the first letter and uh, it will go and uh, auto complete on my entry. So it saves a lot of time. And I stop my clock and the entry is done. 
So whenever you go to case management and open time tracking, this is what you see. You will see, uh, for example, for today, how much time you spend uh, for attorneys and paralegals. It's very uh, um, like sensitive information. They they really need to know how much billable time they put in today. So they uh, they see here that uh, they just did two hours thirty nine minutes, and that's not enough for the day. So they need to stay late, <laughs> basically. Um, but uh, everything is. Uh, information can be printed um, as uh, Excel spreadsheet and for those of you who um, need to transfer this uh, billing information to the accountant in order to pay uh, your um, employees, your users, you can do it from here. Um, you can export all records or export selected and definitely you can use filters for any range that you need. We also have here uh, reports uh, statistics. For example, uh, if I filter today um, for this month, so I uh, see here activities that took most time and it's all color coded and uh, you can see, okay, you spent a lot of time preparing for 33 AOIC and uh, you built one hour, 24 minutes. So the, your billable rate multiplied by this time. So the total billable uh, charge is $420 and so on and so forth. So for any time period, if you want to know uh, what's uh, built and how much uh, is going to be charged to a client's account, that's where you see it. Cases that took most uh, time, so you will see here uh, all cases and all the tasks uh, that tracked on that case, and clients that took most time. So you worked a lot on Paul Grisham, but uh, you didn't uh, spend enough time on Sandra Klein. So it's uh, visual and it's easy for you. You can print this report and uh, very good for uh, managers to see what's going on. Time tracking. Uh, also, we have settings for the time tracking. You can use time tracking in real time, but uh, if you talk to any attorneys, they don't do that. They round the time to the nearest 10, 15, 20, 30, 60 minutes. So if they talk to a uh, client for five minutes and they round to next 20, so they the client will be billed for 20 minutes. So. Uh, you have ability to make that selection as well and uh, just click save. So next one is dashboard. So dashboard basically shows you what's uh, uh, going on in your practice, uh, uh, what um, sales report, like recent sales closed in the software uh, in the uh, firm. So if you uh, use uh, billing in the system so that's where the information is uh, feeding from you will see the invoices uh, built to a certain client and you can use different filters and uh, view the uh, graphic reports now let's go to billing Before you start um, any billing uh, transactions in the software, I recommend uh, go to billing settings. And uh, we have several tabs here uh, that you may want to uh, address first before you start creating invoices. So um, every time you um, check your time or you uh, complete to, uh, tasks that are billable, you may want to include them as unbilled items on your invoice. So next time you create your invoice, they automatically go there. So if you check uh, these boxes, so unbilled items will include billable time tracking items, billable case tracking items, to-dos with status completed, uh, and even non-billable items. Uh, from time tracking and case tracking. Um, this change we did recently uh, by request of one of our uh, customers 
and what they do, they uh, figure out that they do a lot of unbuilt uh, items to a client and the client doesn't see that and uh, that's why they don't uh, see any value in their services because they think, okay, we paid you for this and this, but they don't see what's done uh, behind the scenes and uh, for what the, the firm didn't charge them. So they ask us to include non-billable items and on, on the invoice so you have an option to show them as zero rate or just as no charge. So you select that and if non-billable item will still be shown on the uh, invoice as no charge so the client see okay today they talk to you but uh, the firm decided to not charge me for this uh, particular phone conversation. And uh, you can include total of billable and non-billable time on the bottom of invoice or include only billable time. So uh, it's uh, also easy for clients to see, okay, out of uh, 20 hours billed, uh, they also uh, did like three hours on bill time um, on their dime. Um, you can set up a tax rate if you have some invoices uh, that you charge sales tax on. This is uh, what it's for. And uh, on client's invoices, there is a section for client message. So you can put them, uh, put this message here, usually about uh, like, if you don't pay on time, well, we're going to charge you 1% penalty, blah, 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 blah. So any client message that you want, you can enter it here. Then billable rates. For each user, you can enter the billable rate so you don't have to worry about them. That's how time tracking uh, actually calculates uh, the fees to be charged to clients. So because uh, the system knows uh, your uh, billable rates and you can add rate for any, uh, for any user in the account. For invoice ter terms, you can add uh, different invoice terms, due and receipt, uh, net 30 and stuff like that. Uh, payment methods, so also you can introduce uh, different payment methods. You have default ones and you can drag and drop uh, if you want to uh, position in the drop down menu in a different position. And also we have work codes. Similar like uh, in QuickBooks, we have items. Uh, so you select an item and uh, the description of an item automatically uh, populates to the invoice. The same is here. So you can create your work code, let's say, AUD for audit reconsideration or CDP for collection due process hearing and stuff like that. So once you enter this, every time you create an invoice, it will be just easy uh, to choose a work code and it's done. So now let's go to actually creating an invoice. And we're going to create an invoice uh, for uh, Sandra Klein. Um, her name and address automatically populates from the profile, the date, it's current date, but you can choose any date you want. Uh, you want to select the terms, uh, whether it's uh, due and receipt, due 30, due 60, and so on and so forth. Invoice number. So invoice number is automatically uh, populated based on the prior number. So it's whatever format you use, uh, and uh, the next invoice will be in the consecutive order. So. Uh, but if you want to override the numbers, you can definitely do that. So the due date is today. You can select sales representative, sales representative here. And here's a section for our unbuilt items. So we booked all this time um, using the time tracking feature or um, to do tasks, uh, but uh, it's shown under unbuilt. So you have an option to add it to uh, this current invoice or just leave it for the next invoice. So if you want to add a charge uh, unbuilt item to the invoice, just click apply and it all automatically goes to new charges. So if we want to apply all unbuilt items, so we will have uh, our invoice created new charges so you don't need to do anything else. So this is how easy it is when you do uh, time tracking and you properly book your time and uh, track your time. Uh, if you want to add additional line, you can absolutely do that. Click, just click more lines, uh, pencil icon, enter your uh, description or select from the um, uh, work code and enter the periods that you're working was uh, working uh, with and uh, whatever rates uh, that you want to charge, just click save. So after that, 
you would need just to click save. So your invoice is saved and uh, automatically you will be uh, forwarded to transactions list. Transaction list is one of the first uh, pages on the uh, billing section. Here it's a hyperlink so you can always open the invoice. You can filter also your transactions if you want to uh, just show all the payments or you want to find invoice for a certain client or any date range or any category of clients you can do that. So let's say I have uh, my invoice, it's balance due, it's still 921 uh, that she needs to pay and Remember, I talked to you about payment processing. So payment processing goes hand in hand with case management and billing. You cannot use payment processing if uh, you don't have case management and billing because apparently you cannot create invoices without billing interface. Uh, in this license, I have both. I have case management, billing and payment processing. And now I want to charge uh, the client this amount of money. So everything is integrated in here and it's pretty easy to do so let me show you how to set up your merchant accounts with Spinball tax uh, i know we have a lot of questions about it so i wanted to show you how it works we are going to go to settings in the blue menu bar and select payment processing here uh, we have um, options to add three different gateways you can uh, select um, authorize.net gateway if, uh, for example, you have merchant account with Bank of America, uh, they use authorize.net gateway. Uh, then you can do uh, PCI payment solutions. So a lot of banks, uh, they uh, use PCI payment solutions gateway. So you just need to know what your merchant uses. And the third option is PayPal. And um, this is what I'm going to show you today uh, with PayPal. I already have uh, uh, it uh, set, but uh, let me just click add how to add a merchant account. So three options, authorize.net, PayPal, Pro, PCI Payment Solutions. All three basically set up almost identical. You just need to uh, go to uh, settings in PayPal and get uh, proper information. So I, I choose PayPal Pro. So what we need here, we basically need to uh, find out the API username, API password, and the signature for that PayPal account that you have. Name is it's, uh, op, uh, it's a field that uh, for you to, to identify, you can just put whatever company name you have uh, with PayPal. Let me open uh, my PayPal account here. So where, I think it wants to me to log in again. Okay. Okay. So we need to have um, API username and API password for our PayPal account. It's not your username and password that you use to log in. It's different thing completely. So in the PayPal account, click on this settings icon in the blue menu bar on the top right and select, select account settings. Then we need to go to API access and click on the update link next to it. And then select the option manage API credentials. And that's where you get the information from. Very easy to find, no big deal, and there is instruction also uh, inside Pitbull Tags. So all you do, you just click to show and you copy username. You click signature to show, you copy, and you paste it to your application. And that's it. After that, you select whether it's credit cards you're accepting or if it's a merchant account that accepts e-checks. Remember, for e-checks, it's not regular credit card processing uh, merchant agreement that you have. For e-checks and to process ACH, uh, most of the time, it's a separate um, 
merchant agreement that you need to have. So if you're accepting both ACH and credit cards, you might need to have uh, two agreements, maybe with the same merchant, maybe with different. And maybe right now, um, I've opened merchant account long, long time ago, so I don't know how it's done right now. Uh, maybe they uh, find found a way to uh, offer both uh, options in one agreement. But you need to have each X option if you want to so, um, get H. Um, ACH transactions process through Pitbull. And for declined transactions, email notification, you want to enter emails of your accountant, your bookkeeper, or whoever needs to be notified when the client's payment is bounced. So you do that and you are basically set. Um, I already have uh, my uh, PayPal here uh, selected. So you can have actually several merchant accounts. I know a lot of tax resolution companies, they have uh, multiple merchant accounts just in case, just in case someone decides to block the account or uh, maybe some account uh, has better terms than others or maybe some account allows them to process transactions with maximum, let's say, 5,000 limit, but some uh, they allow to process transactions with unlimited uh, amount. So it all depends. Uh, whenever you add uh, multiple merchants, you have options to hear, uh, uh, here to set. You can split transactions equally between merchants. So you can process transactions through uh, merchant one, merchant two, merchant three, or you can uh, just uh, don't do anything and everything will go through primary merchant account. You can also select and say, okay, process transactions over 5,000 limit through merchant, uh, let's say CAW Inc here, or process smaller transactions. For example, you have uh, more um, beneficial terms with uh, one merchant account for smaller transactions because they don't charge, uh, let's say, uh, transaction fees. And for example, if it's uh, less than 1,000, uh, you will, be better off uh, processing through, let's say here, I call test uh, merchant. So it all depends and you can click save here and uh, use all the settings. Now that we set up the payment processing, uh, we want to go and uh, charge a transaction. We go to transaction list. We again need to open um, our invoice. And uh, here at the uh, bottom left, we have a section called process payment. So we have several uh, options here. I can process now the entire amount due for 921. And I already have my credit card entered in the client profile. Remember I showed you and I selected the credit card is primary. Um, I can set up uh, to charge on due date. For example, if due date would be not uh, today's date, but uh, two days after, I can do that and the software will automatically charge on the due date. Or I can select any date that I want and I say, okay, and the client says, I'll have money on the 25th, charge me then. I can also set, a client says, okay, I'll pay you 500 now and uh, 421 in, in, a, in a week. So I can charge 500 only and I can charge now let's say 500 and all I need to do is just click process payment. Another option here is on schedule. So whenever you select on schedule, you want to schedule payments. What does it mean? So we are in tax resolution industry. We know that uh, clients uh, are distressed, so they don't need, uh, they, they, they don't necessarily have a lot of money to spend, and uh, some of them, they just say that, uh, but some of them are really struggling. So they say, I can pay you 500 a week, but I cannot pay you more than, uh, let's say the invoices for five grand, I cannot pay you 5,000 right in front. Uh, even if we wanted to do that, uh, they, they'll say, no, I, I just don't have money. Uh, I get my paycheck and I'll pay you every week. So in order to uh, forget about this invoice and uh, don't remember that you need to charge every week for this client, uh, you can create recurring schedule and you can select, let's say, 
500 but uh, the invoice amount is uh, too small here so uh, let's say they want to charge 100 bucks every week and uh, every one week not every other week uh, that's why you select interval a lot of confusion people have with this so interval every week means every one week every other week every three weeks and stuff like that and you want to uh, let's say he gets his paycheck on Fridays and he said okay charge me on Monday and you can select uh, when uh, this can be processed so Monday the 23rd and end after certain number of occurrences so if I choose five occurrences I will have 1000 charged uh, I, if I will choose 10 occurrences, I'll say 1,000 charged. What happens if um, the amounts and the time intervals are not equal? So you may um, select customize schedule and say, okay, uh, we are going to charge on the 23rd, we are going to charge, let's say $300. But then the client says, okay, on Friday that week, I will have more money on the 27th, so charge the rest. So I think it's 621 will be the rest. So if the intervals and amounts are not the same, you will choose customize schedule and you click save. So whenever the time comes on the 20th, 3rd and the 27th of September, the software will automatically charge your client's account. If the client's payment is successful, it will be applied automatically to the invoice. And if it's not successful, uh, the person who you indicated to receive decline uh, notification will receive notification via email. And also all cases for this particular client will be automatically changed to suspended status. So suspended means the payment didn't go through. It's up to you if you want to continue with this case or you want to hold off until the client pays you. So this is automated. Now let's show you how to process payment now. So if, for example, I want to charge the entire amount 921 right now, I just click process payment and uh, we will see that invoice has been updated. And the payment uh, transaction will be shown in the transactions list. So I click Save. This is transactions that I did uh, before, and uh, they were uh, processed. Probably I played too much with payment processing settings, and I need to redo the settings. But uh, setting up the merchant account is very not complicated. So uh, when you do that and you want to make sure that it works, create a transaction and charge one dollar or whatever amount it is and then you can easily um, refund it back. Um, whenever there is a recurring schedules uh, and uh, the payments are charged automatically to a um, client's account, the payment will be booked as auto pay and you can go to these transactions and see uh, that it was applied to a certain invoice. If you go to the invoice amount, you will see all payments uh, for this particular invoice with reference numbers from the merchant account. And uh, you will see the balance due is 917 out of original 1250. And uh, you can see that uh, this invoice is being charged on schedule. So you can always click edit and um, uh, change the schedule. So it's paid $115 every Friday starting uh, September 13th and it ends after nine occurrences. What if you don't use payment processing from Pitbull Tax and you just receive checks from your clients? Well, lucky you, they, they, they have some money on their accounts and they just bring you checks or send you in the mail. So you can book a payment easily by clicking on receive payment. And uh, entering the payment transactions right here. A lot of confusion our customers have based on the phone calls that we get 
that they use receive payment uh, on the uh, thinking that this is automatic payment processing that we just did with invoices. This is not the case. Uh, receive payment is only for manual payment that you receive. So the client comes to you uh, and you just sign an engagement letter and they want to put a retainer and they say, okay, here's 500 as a retainer or whatever amount it is, uh, and they uh, write a check. So this check you will book uh, here under receive payment. And, and uh, you can select which invoice to apply to and whether it's initial payment or it's a recurring payment and amount to apply and stuff like that. So if uh, you use um, QuickBooks, um, very easy, um, similar um, process, similar procedure as um, you work in uh, QuickBooks. So you select a client, you select the date of the payment, select the uh, payment method, how they um, pay you, check, uh, select the invoice number, amount, um, and any memo that uh, you want to put. So it's uh, easily shown on the transaction list. So if they paid you 50% retainer or if they paid in full, everything uh, will be shown under memos here. And um, each transaction, uh, except for those that were declined or didn't process, will have a hyperlink to the number so you can easily go to that particular payment and see it. Or if uh, you want to see uh, uh, any invoice, you can just click through and go to the invoice. We have ability to uh, export all these transactions to QuickBooks. And uh, to do that, on the transaction list, uh, we go and we scroll to the bottom. We have ability here to export to QuickBooks and we use um, IIF file for this case. Uh, IIF stands for Intuit Interchange File. That's what uh, the file format that uh, QuickBooks uses. Remember, this uh, exports transactions only to desktop versions of QuickBooks. It does not work with QuickBooks Online. So if you're on QBO, uh, forget about that. You will not be able to uh, export your transactions from Pitbull to uh, QuickBooks. But if you're on desktop, like a lot of accountants still are, uh, then you will be able to do that. So, um, to export transactions, filter them uh, for um, a date range. For example, I want to transactions only for this month. Uh, I don't want to uh, export transactions because I have previously uh, done this before. So all transactions, uh, I want to select them and select IIF. So the IIF file has been downloaded uh, into it interchange file. It's right here in the lower left corner. So transactions went to my downloads. Now I need to open QuickBooks and um, here I uh, created a sample file uh, in my old QuickBooks uh, desktop version for accountant 16. All I need to do, go to file utilities, import, and select IIF files. So the path is very simple. Uh, those of you who work with Quick QuickBooks a lot, this is how you always do it. Go to file, utilities, import, and IIF files. And now I need to select my transactions that I just did. Click open, blank transaction, fill in the probable fields and try again. Okay, I select it invalid transaction because uh, I had declined transaction I selected. So that's my bad. But um, all other transactions, they were successfully imported and that avoided me a uh, double entry into QuickBooks. So if you keep your uh, billing in Pitbull Tax you, and at the same time you also use QuickBooks for other purposes and you still want uh, to have these transactions in QuickBooks, this is the easy way uh, to get your transactions into QuickBooks. Um, we have various billing reports also uh, in the system. 
So um, if you want to uh, view, for example, payments received, uh, you will see all the payments received um, uh, in September and you can easily uh, change by default it's uh, for this month but you can change any dates and uh, use it like this. Um, all standard reports for accounts receivable, aging summary, aging detail, client balance summary, I know we don't have much time to go into that but let me show you like cash flow forecast. So I know I have created recurring schedule to charge my client's uh, account for $115 every uh, Friday. So starting 13, 20, this is what my projected cash flow. So I can uh, basically rely on this money in September. So I know it's um, uh, not set in stone because payment can be declined, but this is what uh, payments I am expecting to get. So cash flow forecast used a lot. Um, performance by sales representatives, sales by client summary. So for example, if you uh, sell a lot to uh, this particular client, yes, you can do that. So this is how billing works. And of course we have uh, um, issue credit, for example, if uh, you need to apply a credit to your client uh, as a refund or you want to apply to invoice, you can do that. You can use issue credit uh, section here. And we have a recurring transactions list. So you can create invoices on a recurring basis. Uh, to do that, um, you would go to the invoice uh, that you want to um, make recurring. Uh, let's say it's a bookkeeping or payroll charges uh, that you want. Uh, at the bottom of the invoice, first of all, you have all these options. You can delete invoice, you can void invoice, you can print it or email it to a client. You can make it recurring and you select the recurring schedule for that particular invoice and you create a template name. Let's say payroll services or bookkeeping services, accounting, whatever it is. So uh, similar to like you do... Um, mm, Transactions in QuickBooks, you can also set uh, how many days in advance you want to create this recurring invoice and so on and so forth. So don't confuse this with um, processing um, recurring payments on the invoice. With recurring payments, it's one invoice with multiple payments applied to it. Recurring invoices, it's separate invoices uh, for each month or week, depending on what you uh, select as a recurring schedule. So this is also a big confusion, recurring schedule for payments or recurring schedule for uh, creating invoices on a recurring schedule. So that's, uh, this is a big difference. I think I rushed through uh, the billing and uh, now let's get to questions. I know we have a few minutes left. Uh, I, I, I hope that you will stay because I still need to select the winner. So let me get to questions. Um, okay, I think I stopped here. I learned how important it is to keep that client active so that the alerts work and I can reach out to them when they default. Yes, Catherine, if you want to keep getting uh, transcripts alerts, you need to keep the account active. So you cannot archive it and change it to close status. Um, for the past week or so, I've been re-entering multiple codes. So this is IRS transcript delivery, it's not related. Norman, please call customer service or open a ticket and we'll get over it. I'm getting transcripts just fine and I did it today. Um, is there anything that would stop us from creating a duplicate client in the original client uh, if the original client file is closed? No, Sean, it will not. And you already left. Um, what about the prospective versus client setting? What is required in the system to consider the person a client versus prospective client? Okay, the difference between prospect, Kanisha, and uh, client is prospect doesn't have social security in the system. So for prospect, you basically can create only two forms. You can create 2848 without the social and 8821. And you, you can use evaluation tools, you can use a resolution evaluation, 
case diagnostics, but you will not be able to create any IRS forms for submission. You still can create power of attorney and the client basically will have to fill in their social security. This is used for people like you have a new client, they don't trust you just yet and you're sending them the package uh, with your engagement letter, with your power of attorney to sign and you're waiting, but they're already in the system because maybe you already did uh, initial intake, you already sent them client questionnaire, so that's the difference. Uh, we're having problems charging ACH to bank accounts. How can we fix this? Um, Amy, just uh, contact uh, us with a support ticket or uh, call us. We need to uh, see the setup. And uh, maybe you don't have uh, eCheck uh, merchant account. Uh, maybe it's a different per uh, reason. Uh, is there a feature that we can search for expiring CC? Uh, no, but that's a good question because, yeah. Uh, Credit cards expire on file with the clients and you never know about that. Um, by the way, I, I think I forgot to uh, tell you the shortcut how to search for any clients. For example, uh, on this uh, um, left-hand side, we have a manual for individual clients, business and IRS contacts. So the easiest way to search for clients is to enter uh, their name. So if I enter the first three letters of the name, uh, clients with this combination will come up. But this is, uh, a lot of people, they don't know about this, but it's not only for client's name. Sometimes I don't remember the client's name, but for some reason I know they're from Coral Springs and they have 954 phone number. So if I enter 954 area code, I will get all clients with uh, that area code. So, or if they're from Miami, I will enter 305 and all clients with that uh, phone number will pop up. So it's easy. Uh, like I said, my memory fails me. I don't remember my client's name. I don't remember what I did uh, months ago with uh, certain uh, clients, uh, unless they're a real pain in the neck that you'll never forget them. But um, uh, you can search here by any field, uh, if you remember the spouse name and she has different last name, you can search by that name. Uh, if you remember, um, I don't know, uh, the IRS contact name that uh, is, um, for example, Schneider um, is, no, the Schlepper, so it's not it's different. I have a revenue officer Schneider, but, uh, um, you, you can search by that name. Uh, if uh, you search by address, zip code, any um, city, so you can do that. Let me get back to it. Um, um, does your software pull 1041 transcripts? Not on subject, but no, we do not support 1041s. Can I import my clients that are in my tax prep program into Pitbull? Yes, Christine, you can. Uh, and uh, I showed in the beginning uh, that you can format uh, your client list in the uh, proper format in CSV for, uh, file and you can upload it. Um, and does Pitbull software all you all you to pull transcripts with form 8821 allow you probably to pull transcripts with form 8821 or do you need to have 2848 on file? Not on subject, but yes, you can pull with 8821, no problem. Um, does the calendar syncs with Microsoft Outlook? Yes, it does. Uh, can you get your to-dos to automatically show up on the calendar? Yes, you can add to the calendar your to-dos. Um, can you connect PB Calendar to your mobile device? Um, uh, not sure what you mean by uh, mobile device uh, here, but for example, if you use a Google Calendar, you can definitely uh, connect it if you have Google Calendar app on your phone. How about the population of the follow-up task or to-dos? Are they now populating to this calendar? Um, yeah, follow-up tasks, uh, they populate to the calendar as well. Can we print off the calendar for office meetings we hold daily? Absolutely. Uh, go to calendar report and uh, you will have all your calendar for the week or for any time you need. 
Uh, can use link to send to my Google Calendar. How can use? I don't understand the question. It's not complete, but yes, you can. Uh, you don't need to use link. You just click and uh, connect the token to your uh, Gmail account. Do you mind going over Outlook and Gmail integration of Calendar? Well, Christopher, you left already, I see, but if I had time, I would go over. You will see the recording probably tomorrow. Um, okay, and to do, if possible, what if what I learn at the conference will be different? I think what I will learn at NTPI 3 in Fort Lauderdale. Um, I've been to NTPI uh, level three like five years ago. Yes, it's uh, different because here we train you in depth on pitbull tags, plus we tell you uh, exactly how the cases are created. So Jamie has presentation on um, payroll issues and innocent spouses. Ho so you will basically get an uh, entire case, uh, how it was done with actual forms completed so you can and uh, his descriptions uh, his explanations so yes it is different in NTPI they don't give you real case studies uh, is there a way to add other state forms like Missouri and Kansas yes Christine it's on our list so uh, stay tuned uh, how do I get to the calendar again uh, just case management and calendar that's pretty easy or um, um, if you want to create calendar event on the home menu, there is a small calendar like this. Just click on it and uh, it will allow you to create. Okay. Um, uh, the question was filled out, but not things have changed. Well, what's out? I think it's not case management related and the person has left. Um, how to remove client access? Uh, to remove client access, you need to go to the client profile, scroll down to um, client portal section, and there is a checkbox block access. Can you see all of your clients that have been assigned to a particular revenue officer agent? Um, I think you can uh, by exporting the data uh, to Excel spreadsheet and filtering by revenue officer. Is Pitbull planning to offer you seminar on the net via live webinars? Um, yes, it's on the list. Um, do you have a phone application? Yes, we do. It's called Pitbull Tax Mobile. Uh, it's uh, available on uh, Google Play and uh, App Store. Um, I've noticed that all my transcript reports don't stay listed in the transcript report section. They seem to disappear after a short time. Uh, yes, they disappear from there after 30 days, but uh, they're always under files section, folder transcripts. So there they will stay indefinitely, but from the transcript report section, uh, they will go off uh, after 30 days. Can you track referral sources like attorneys and accountants? Yes, you can. And uh, in the client profile, there is a client source section that you can use. Um, I think, okay. I scroll down one second. Is there a way to populate multiple to-dos with multiple clients, like for example, to-dos where a client first comes on? Mm, I'm not sure I understand the question, so Kathleen, please uh, reach out. Is there a way to generate letters to OPR to represent practitioners for circular 230 violations? Uh, we don't have a template for that, but uh, you can create your customized letter. Yes, uh, there is a way. Uh, just go to settings and select customized letters. Can a task be used as a template to be reused for other clients? Mm, it's automatically, the, the name of the task will, uh, if you're using time tracking, will auto-complete, um, but no, there is no like template for automatic uh, to-dos.
Is there a template for standardizing to dos and subtasks? Um, not sure. Uh, no, I think we don't have a template for this. Okay, I keep uh, using scrolls. There are so many questions. I'm sorry. Um, Can you set up Pitbull to tell you when you want to be notified about upcoming to-dos? Pitbull is showing me to-dos that aren't due for several days. I'd like to see them on the due date or the day before. We had this issue, uh, but uh, it has been fixed. So try again, please, and let us know. Um, when a staff member uses a time tracker for actual hours worked. Does it populate to the actual hours in the time tracker section of the client? Uh, yes, it does, absolutely, yes. So actual time is automatically updated every time you do a time, uh, time tracking. Um, is there any integration with Jetpack workflow and QBO? Um, I don't know, we are not Jetpack workflow and we're not QBO, I'm not <laughs> sure. Or maybe you're asking if we're integrated with Jetpack and QBO. No, we are not uh, with both. Um, does the Pitbull software allow you to pull transcripts? I think that's the same question with 8821. Yes, you can. Is Pitbull tax calendar add-in covered in the subscription price or in add-on. It's part of case management and billing add-on. How do you add a task in to-do? Just open that to-do and go to subtask and create subtask. With the payment options, can we set up payment agreements and pay on behalf of clients? Uh, not sure I understand why you want to pay on behalf of clients. Um, you mean pay on behalf of clients using their bank accounts? Um, I I know you can go to IRS website and make a payment like that uh, and uh, using their card, but I don't think it's a little bit related to uh, this subject. Um, Okay, then we have a lot of questions with that. Paul is still showing, okay. How can I make a specific screen to be the default screen every time I log in? For example, if I want to start with a calendar or the to-do. That's easy to do. You just go to settings and go to general settings and default view you can select calendar and that's how you uh, choose uh, what page you, you will see. Uh, the color coding is great. Is there any way to get those colors to show up on the client summary? It shows great in the case tracking screen but not on summary. Uh, yeah, we can work on that, Catherine. Um, Can you add manual time? Yes, you can. Uh, you can uh, enter a task uh, under case tracking and enter it manually. Or uh, you can, uh, if you use time tracking, you can do that as well. Can you edit time? Yes, you can. Um, not exactly part of case management, but do you know how to print or email a client questionnaire instead of using the portal? Yes, absolutely. Go to client questionnaire and there is a button there, email to a client or uh, go to print icon and print the client questionnaire from here. Just click print. Um, can we do ACH through Pitbull then? We just need to do it manually. No, you can do ACH if you have ACH uh, uh, merchant account. If uh, your merchant account allows you to accept ACH, absolutely. Um, how do we get client approval to process charges against the accounts? Um, you uh, let them sign credit card authorization forms, which is part of Pitbull. It's under letters, credit card authorization form. 
you sign it and you can charge the accounts uh, for the, your recurring charges. How you are notified if payment is declined? Um, you get email not notification. Does the software integrate with uh, QuickBooks Online? No, it does not. Um, any plans for importing transactions to QBO? No, until QBO allows uh, uh, to do that. <laughs> do we have a current picture of my baby? <laughs> yes, we do, but it's not related. You'll see it on <laughs> next week on the, our user conference. Um, does Pitbull Tax have a merchant account provider that they work with for Crate or ACH? Um, we do have a um, relationship with PCI Payment Solutions, so if you need help with that, uh, we can give you a contact uh, how to open a merchant account. We bill a monthly representation fee. We do a recurring sales receipt in QBO. How would you go th do this in Pitbull Tax? Well, I think I explained how to make recurring charges in Pitbull Tax. Um, you choose uh, where you do it, in, either in QBO or in Pitbull Tax. Um, After a client name in the list, what does uh, one in parentheses and 1.1 mean? That means uh, you created a scenario for this client. So um, this numbers 1, 2, uh, 1.1, 1.2, that means you, cre you use scenario simulators uh, add-on and uh, you are working with that scenario. Um, I'm still confused by the to-dos populating on a calendar. Please elaborate. Um, Catherine, we'll call you later about uh, that because I really don't have time right now. We are running well behind. Will you be saving the webinar recording in the system? We'll have it on the website. Is there any, any way to see on a to-do what the case status is? It would be extremely helpful if it was to show the status on the case, even just the color in the to-do that the one assigned to the task knows in the case should be suspended or not worked on. No, Kenneth, uh, good question, but there is no way to do uh, to see the case status uh, when you're creating a to-do. In the event you want to change time built for staff, does it notify the staff member that you as admin have changed the time? No, it does not, Emily. Um, we need a template for automatic to-dos for the management of onboarding a client, such as all the forms that need to be generated and tracked for completion. We're spending a lot of time uh, as clients entering all of the same task for every client every time. Um, and this brings a good question, Catherine. Uh, and, uh, Maybe it's time for me to uh, tell you about uh, the future enhancement that is coming uh, with the next version 6.0 that is coming out uh, sometime next year. We hope uh, spring next year. And this is practice management uh, feature that we are currently working on. And uh, yes, uh, I understand that uh, there are a lot of uh, issues that all, all of you as uh, managers or owners of uh, practices, tax practices experience. So that's why we listened to the feedback of our customers and we are uh, actually already in progress of developing our own practice management uh, solution. So that's why I think we don't have any plans to integrate with any others, like someone mentioned Jetpack uh, Workflow or QBO. Uh, I don't know if they have practice management um, even. But um, yes, practice management is coming and that will be uh, part of uh, the deal. Um, can clients pay an invoice through client portal? Can the client update the credit card information on the client portal? No, Greg, it's not possible right there. And uh, I think I jumped through all the questions so far. I apologize uh, for the poll screen issue that I had uh, in the second half. 
and it's time to select a winner uh, for today's competition and I like the most the question about risk management capacity um, that the person has left actually Thomas Carroll so you were supposed to be a lucky one but you left so I will have to choose another one um, okay let me go with I think I liked uh, the question about and slash suggestion about expiring credit cards that uh, you can search for expiring credit cards in the system and I'm trying to find who asked that question and uh, I don't know if you can filter here in go to webinar who asked about expiring CC Can you share? Pick me, pick me. In a, yeah, yeah. I don't know who who has that question. I'm trying to look for that person. So so many questions here. I'm sorry. Um, okay, I'll find that person um, in the list and. I will definitely notify but you know who you are because you asked that question and but I'm sure a lot of people they want to know who it is I'm still uh, looking through anyway um, to finalize today's uh, webinar sorry uh, we went on uh, overboard I thought two hours will be now but uh, I think I talk too slow and uh, maybe the topic is too big that uh, we need to a lot more time especially with uh, a lot of questions and answers so I have a little surprise for you so uh, as a thank you for staying with me for this uh, almost two and a half hours uh, I want to uh, give you a little incentive uh, to get case management and billing add-on if you don't have it already. So um, if you want to purchase it today, I'll give you 25% discount uh, on the full price. Uh, the full price for the case management is uh, $150 a, uh, if you're on an annual plan per user and uh, $15 or $14.97 to be exact uh, on a monthly plan. And uh, for those of you who don't have case management and billing and uh, for those of you who don't even have pitbull tax and you're here and you stayed and uh, listened to all this uh, long presentation I want to thank you so much and also offer you a little uh, incentive to get on board with us so if you are a new customer and you never purchased from us before and you want uh, to jump on board please uh, give us a call uh, today and we will give you 25% discount on the entire package. So anything that you purchase today only uh, we will give you 25% discount. And uh, for existing uh, customers who don't have um, case management add-on yet and you want to add it, you can use uh, promo code CASE25 today only and you will get 25% discount. Our phone, um, uh, open for the next uh, one and a half hours so here is uh, the promo code for the um, for the discount I think here it is case 25 if you want to get case management uh, and billing add-on if you don't have it it's uh, 
uh, it's going to give you 25% discount. And if you want to purchase uh, the full package uh, and you're a new customer, please give us a call. And uh, our phone number is here on the screen, 877-474. 8285. And if you want to reach out via email, it's info at pitbulltax.com. Again, I'm still trying to look through who asked that question about expiring CC. I am curious who won that registration. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, guys, I don't want to uh, hold. Uh, you here, so I uh, will find that person and will contact them. Uh, but uh, that was a question about uh, how to filter clients on expiring CC. Again, thank you so much for, for your time today. I uh, appreciate uh, you uh, spending time with us. And uh, if you have questions, please uh, contact us. Uh, the contact details are right on the screen. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.